Team Zug and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a video that I really want to do for a long time. And thanks for the success of my top 8 worst steam locomotives from Great Britain, which is one of my successful videos and happens to be one of my favourites. Now, it's this time it's the exact opposite of worst best. So, this is not a top 10 best steam locomotives list. In fact, it's a top 12 best steam locomotives list. Spoiler alert, here's some steam engines that I want to let you guys know what's on it. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you could probably guess Who's my favourite? But if not, then then you're about to find out. We've got an an LNER Express engine that is well loved by many people, and a steam engine that some people are not happy to see. So, without a doubt, let's get to my top twelve best steam locomotives from Great Britain. Number 12, the London and Brighton South Coast Railway E2 locomotives. Yes, this is a steam engine that some people are not happy to see. Let me explain. So, who built these things? They were designed by a man called Sir John Billiton, I think that's his name. Sorry, I got the name wrong. They were built between 1913 and 1916. Over 10 of them were ever made. The first five looked like basically a generic, ordinary tank engine. Yes, there is a little problem I have with these types of tank engines because I use the exact tank almost on every single tank. Engine. I'm gonna get so much hate for this. But when the second batch arrived, they were a little bit different, and I kind of like it because they extended the tanks. Which, in my opinion, they might be the first tank engines to ever do this. Meaning the E2 second batches were pretty unique. Sure, they had problems like. Two were trialled at a push-pull train, but they were not that successful doing it. However, they were very, they were really good at shunting, which I kind of like, because I think they were better as shunters. Yeah, the Eaters lived for 50 years. 50 years! Normally a steam engine's life expires to 30 years, nothing more. Or nothing less. Actually, it's a little bit less for some. But what the E2s mean, because they lasted for 50 years, is because of World War II, the Southern Railway needed all the engines they could get. No matter how good or terrible they are. And I know the E2s were the exact opposite of Thomas, his character, but that's what I like about the E2s. The history is what inspired me. And yes, the E2's will came to be Thomas the Tank Engine. Sadly, the E2's could not last that long. Between 1961, I believe, or 1963, they were all withdrawn and scrap. Shame. However, there was an intent to make a replica of the E2s. Now you might be thinking, Zuck, you're obviously making this up. Not kidding. There was actually an attempt to give the E2s the new rebuilt treatment, a new member called 1010. Simply cause, yeah, cause it'll look nice. Cause they think, hey, it'll be nice to see an, an E2 again. However, the project was canceled. Why? Because they didn't want to create the same problems that the Eaters had. Which was pre a shame to be honest. I really wanted the Eaters to get rebuild treatment. 
However, the E2s did get a rebuild treatment, sort of, but in a miniature version. They basically made a miniature version of the E2s and named her Lucy. That's actually really nice. It goes to show that even though people hate the E2s, there are also going to be the people who love it. And that was the main reason I didn't. I decided not to put these tank engines on my list, on my top 8 worst for steam locomotives, because here's the thing E2 haters, I don't hate the E2s. I love these machines and I'm going to do so for the rest of my days. The reason it's that low on the list is because, well, I don't want to get in trouble with some... I know people are going to hate me, so I just want to play it safe. Okay, moving on. Number 11, the Furnace Railway K2s. I forgot who built design these things. Apologies in advance. However, they were called as... Seagulls? Class Seagulls, I think. Yeah, sorry I got it wrong. These machines look really nice, to be honest. They were really special. They were doing express runs to... I think it's not actually express runs, but let me check it. Oh, I found whoever who made the key to the shop, Stewart, and company. So yeah. So, that's why I just wanted to let you guys know that. Yeah, they were supposed to do... They actually did local passenger trains between Barrow and Furness and Whitehaven. And they entered to the LMS. And that's where it got downhill. They were, sadly, withdrawn from service and scrapped around 1934, I believe. Or was it 1939? Sorry, I got it wrong. I think I might check it. So, yeah. I pray it's a bit of a pity because I would like to see these in a museum someplace, like the National Rail Museum. However, they became the basis for Edward from Tom's and Friends, who's my favorite character. So, yeah. So, I just want to let you guys know that. Number 8. Mining Weddle L Class. Finally, a steam engine has not been withdrawn from service and scrapped. Took myself long enough. Sorry. These little engines, well, I don't know who designed them, but these little engines are really interesting. Why? Was well, because these engines were presumably to work at the mines. Yeah, to like collect coal and stuff, which is pretty nice. Out of all of them, only two of them made to preservation, which is really nice, but I wish more were preserved. One is cab forward with no, that means no cab, and the other had one. I think they're both preserved by the same railway, I might be wrong, but those two I mean, the one with the cab was repainted a few times, first in the bright green, then in blue, which I think it was the better one, and was changed back to green. I think there was a red, he was painted red, I'm not too sure. Thankfully, these two tank engines will later become Billy and Charlie from Tom's and Friends, who are some of my favorite characters. Mostly Billy, because Billy's my second favorite character. And they're also the tank engines that I'm based on. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So, without doubt, if people think they're bland, that's fine. But remember, they're the ones who helped Mallard break the speed record by getting the coal from the mines. I think you owe these engines a lot for that. Number 7, the LNER P2 Mercados. Yes, I am that much of a Gresley guy. These machines were designed by the legend himself, Sir Nigel Gresley. 
out of all these machines ever made, only six of them were ever built. 2001, Cochrane North. 2002, Cochrane, I mean, Earl of Marshall. 2003, Lord President. 2004, Mons Me. 2005, Fame of Fire! No one get it? Oh. And 2006, Wolf of Betternarch. As I was saying, 2003 to 2006 had the A4 nose. Cocker North and Earl Marshall were later get the same treatment. However, nothing good ever lasts. After Sir Nigel Gresley passed away of illness that was incurable at the time, Edward Thompson Lee succeeded him. But what he did was truly unforgivable. First, he scrapped both P1 Macarlos. With someone with a bit of heart could have saved one, or perhaps both. Then, he turned Gresley's first Pacific, Great Northern, into his hideous A1-1. And he was to turn a batch of Gresley's V2s into his Protomatic A2-3. But what he did next was truly unforgivable. He turned all six of Grizzly's P2s into his hideous, crappy P2 A2 slash 2s. Sorry about that. And this is what been a better idea. And this is what Thompson did. He put Thompson's Exterior cylinders, sorry, pushed back from the bogey where the middle cylinder was there. Now it's been done in the past, but what he did was truly unforgivable. Edward Thompson would later retire in 1946 and died in 1954. And as for the P2s, they all got scrapped with no surviving examples. Sad, really. But thankfully, two P2s are getting the new rebuild treatment. One is Kokonov is coming back from the dead with the A4 nose, and a new member of the class, Prince of Wales 2007, which might be completed this year or next year, I'm not too sure. Now that's exciting. I'm so excited for the P P2s to make a comeback. And this is why the, the P2s are on this spot on the list. I actually made a mistake a little bit. I accidentally moved a little bit because I thought it was a top 10. So the K2s are number 11. The mining network is number 10, the peaches in number 9. Sorry about that. Now we can get to the real number 8. The London and Brighton South Coast Railway Terriers. Of course, I had to make a spot for this locomotive. This spot for the locomotives. These things I like to call charming. Some of them are still around today. I forgot who was. I forgot who built it, but if you want to check it out, who built them, check out Terry55 Stepney's video, The History of Stepney. Trust me, it's great. The star class of the locomotive is Stepney, which is really good. I actually really like this. I love Stepney. And there's other terriers that I'm also interested in that are preserved. Those being Box Hill. And Fenchurch. What's and the craziest thing is, Fenchurch was the first member of the class built in both her and Stepney on the Bluebell Railway. Now that's exciting. However, not all the terriers have always been scrapped. Brighton Works, unfortunately, was scrapped. A shame, shame. 
I really love if Brighton Works was preserved. So yeah, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the terriers are good. It just mat it just matters that they're here to stay forever. And that's why the terriers are on my spot on the list. Number seven, the standard fives. Yes, I love these machines. These machines may look like the black fives. Spoiler alert, they're on the list as well. What I love about these machines is that they have a little resemblance to a German locomotive. But without a doubt, these things are so powerful. They're really so good that the drivers are willing to put every power they have just to keep these things running. That goes to show that people really truly care about these machines, myself included. And this is why they're on this spot on my list. Number 7. The 14XX Tank Engines Yes, I am a great western fan. Basically, these machines are really charming. They look so nice with their wheel cre creation. It's something that you don't see every day. In fact, I don't think there's another tank engine that have this wheel arrangement. Sure, there are other tank engines like the N7 class, but they had an extra wheel, so it doesn't count. When they're with an oral coach, it feels like it belongs with it. And yes, these machines will later be the inspiration for Oliver, Thomas's base f from uh, from Thomas and Friends, I meant. And Oliver's one of my favorite characters, so we're gonna go over it. And he's the last Thomas character I'm gonna mention in this video, I promise. Number six, the nine Fs. These machines are big, strong, mighty, and they're also quite charming. Let me explain. These machines were so big, they were the last BR steam engines ever built. Yeah, quite sad a little bit when I'm thinking about it. But the steam engine in Great Britain left on a high note because these machines paid off very well. So much, in fact, that there were some that were sent to Barry Island, and there were some of them that were sent to Barry Island got preserved. That's a fun fact. The last member. Evening Star, I don't think that's the right one, I'm sorry, was the first one to enter Prevation and was also the last one ever built. So that's a fun fact. I said it once and I'll say it again. They are the LMS Garrett's done right. Number five is actually a tie between the 7S the Black Fives and the London South Western Easley Railway S15s, I believe. So I got the name wrong. These machines are really special. Let's have this one first. I got to say, I love the design of this thing. Simply because I know people are going to call it weird because it has small buffers and weird smoke deflectors. But I like it. I think the Southern Railway made a great choice of making these locomotives because they're worth looking at. I mean, people call the key ones ugly, but to me, they look handsome. And that's why I love about these machines. The 7Fs, on the other hand, they're kind of like part of my childhood. You see, there were 11 of these ever made, and only two of them got reserved. That's a fun fact. Yeah, and one of them just so happens to be on a heritage road I was telling you guys about, and it's, and it's this exact same one right here. These machines were so special, and in fact, it was the biggest one they have, which is pretty nice. They were the strongest things they had. 
and that's what I love about them. Now, the 7F, I mean the 4Fs were basically not the strongest, but, and they needed new ones, but that's what I really like about these machines. Sure, in the Fs, more powerful, but they'll never have the thing what charms me with the 7Fs. And that's why the 7Fs are some of my favorite steam locomotives. And finally, we got the Black Fives. The Black Fives are some of my favorite steam locomotives. I really love the design of it. The history of them is really good. 18 of them were preserved, and you might see them on heritage railways, mostly. Sometimes you might see them in Scotland in the Highlands. Which, I don't even, I never saw them there, but I would love to see these machines. Now, I wish they were painted in other colours than other than black. Sure, some were painted in green and red, but still, but that was only when you, when they got preserved. Most of the time of their working life, they were painted black. And no, I still wouldn't have painted one in this god-awful colour scheme. Jeez. Well. That's my Chris shout out to you guys. He's a great YouTuber. Check him out. Number four. The City Class. Another great Western engine on, on this list. I know many people are going to hate me for this. Because this, this type of engine, the star of the show, Save Trouble, is my favorite. Yeah. And if it wasn't for this type of engine, maybe it might not have even existed. Yeah, accordingly, one of the... Some people think that had reported seeing City of Joe going, over, going up to 100 miles per hour. That is incredible, but of course, people call this a debunk because how does a uh, 4... 404 real arrangement, sorry, with outside cylinders, an open cab, and this kind of tender, I'm sorry, could, that doesn't assemble the speed. However, although the Great Western Road doesn't see it, because in 1931, it was going to get withdrawn surface, which it did, and it was going to get scrapped along with the members of the class, but the LNR saved it. And now, Save Trail could still be here at the National Road Museum in York. So that's interesting. I mean, I'm shocked to see an LNER, the, the LNER saving a Great Western engine. That's something you don't see every day. Number 3. The Coronation Class Pacifics. I love these machines. The top speed is 114 miles per hour, which is impressive. The first member of the class, Coronation, broke the famous Silver, Silver Lynx speed records, reaching 114 miles per hour. And that's something what the other class members had in common. These machines almost reach it to become the fastest steam locomotives world until the Americans and Germans sold the title. But sadly that wasn't the case because the record was late broke by Mallard. Spoiler alert, this engine's on the list as well. So yeah. Then during World War II they were de streamlined and into this. Out of all of them, only three of them made it to preservation, including the famous Duchess of Hamilton, along with Mallard. Number 2. Elnir Class A1 slash A3. Mostly flying Scotsmen. Some people consider them to be their favorite steam locomotives, and I kind of see why. Because it's the famous steam locomotive. I mean, the famous steam locomotive in the world. Despite the fact it was never the first member of the class, the Flying Scotsman was recorded to go, get ready for this, 100 
and 100 miles per hour, which is really good in my opinion. But what's less known that there were two other A3 slash A1s that interest me, those being Great Northern and Papyrus. In fact, Papyrus was recorded to go get rid of this 108 miles per hour, much better than find Scotsman speed record. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. As for Great Northern, Great Northern was the first member of the class, meaning he was Gresley's first Pacific. Yep, he was the first one. And then, remember when I said about Edward Thompson? Well, get ready for this. He turned Tom, he turned Great Northern into his weird, grappy A1 slash 1. It wasn't crappy as the A2 slash 2s, but even, even more hideous than the A1s. Great Northern was finally retired in 1962, with Papyrus falling in 1963. And despite the fact Great Northern is now a hideous and grabby Pacific, there was an actually an attempt to see it from being scrapped. Presuming, of course, undo what Thompson did to it, and reverse it back to its GNR form. But that was never the case. And Gresley's first Pacific, Great North, bit the dust at the hands of the Cutter's Torch. And as for Papyrus, despite the fact it reached 108 miles per hour, she ended up becoming a member of the class being scrapped, leaving one A3 flying Scotsman behind. I would like to see Papyrus and Great Northern Preserve as well. And without further ado, my favourite British steam locomotive is the LNER A4s. Yes, I am in fact a Gresley guy, an international Gresley guy. These machines were, in my opinion, a train like heaven. Basically, if you don't know, one of them, number 4468 Mallard, became the fastest steam locomotive in the world and holding that title for more than 80 years at this point. And this is why Mallard is my favourite steam locomotive. Simply because, look, she's so beautiful looking. But Mallard's not just my, f it's not one of my favourite E4, well, he is my favourite E4, but not one of my favourites. Well, he is my favourite, but I also love the other A4s, such as the other A4s that also preserve like Sinatra Gresley, the Union of Canada, White the Eisenhower, Britain, and Union of South Africa. However, there are other A4s that didn't make or didn't make the preservation, which I also wish were preserved. The only one I'm going to talk about is Silver Link, who is the first member of the class. Silver Link break 114 miles per hour, beating all previous speed records in dust. But then coordination came along and beat it, but then mild revenge Silver Link. And what's like Great Northern before him, Silver Link almost got preserved by Sir Billy Butlin, but they ended up failing and Silver Link got scrapped. Till this day, the A4s will always remain as my favourite steam locomotives. And everyone has their own opinions, but I think the A4s are the, are the ticket to privatization. At last, we're done. <laughs> everyone, this has been my top 12 best British steam locomotives from Great Britain. Now... We all have our own opinions. That's fine. If you like what I, if you like, what I mentioned, and if there's an engine that I didn't mention, please let me know in the comments. And yes, it's technically fourteen. I forgot to count it all up. So yeah, that's it for me today, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.